Welcome back, and if this is your first time watching, my name is Brandon, and I sell men's clothing on eBay. We have an absolutely massive thrift haul for you guys. I'm going to put it all in one video. There might be a few clips because it's going to take me so long to get through all the items, and this is probably going to be like an hour, hour and a half video maybe. There's 268 items. This is from December 2023 Rose Bowl Flea Market. I ended up spending $4,075 on those 268 items. So an average of $15.21 per item. And this thrift haul is gonna be worth over $10,000 in sales. So let's not waste any more time. Let's jump into these items. Up first, we have a Carhartt chore jacket. Uh, it is Sherpa lined. It is pretty distressed, but I just sold one that was actually in worse condition than this for 68 bucks. So even if I get that same price for that one, I'll be pretty happy. Here's another Carhartt item. This is a vintage one, blanket lined. Um, Chore jacket, but not quite as big or as thick, but still a pretty nice one. These items are kind of just thrown over here as a mess too, so uh, bear with me as I pull them out. This is a wool rich wool jacket. It is women's, but it does have a nice uh, Aztec print on it. So those are gonna do well even in a women's, and that is wool. Uh, this is a Patagonia vest, like a Sherpa vest. Up next, we have a Pendleton shirt. This is not the flannel material. It is the wool one. I don't pick these up if they're caught in the shirts, but this is just a wool shirt, and it is um, it's still pretty good. Oh, this one has the... Whenever they have this little patch at the bottom... Let me see if I can flip it around and show you guys. The patch at the bottom that tells you what kind of plaid it is. This one says Authentic Lindsay Tartan. That's definitely going to add value. I wouldn't be surprised if this is worth, and it, it's size 2XL, if this is worth like 40 to 50 bucks just for that Pendleton shirt. Here's a pretty big one. This is probably 80 to $120. A vintage Adidas Olympic shirt with all these crazy patches. Uh, the condition on it is actually like unworn, I guess you would say. I, I don't think that's ever been worn. Uh, if it had a tag on it, uh, that's the only thing it's missing is a tag. But besides that, I mean, it's as close to dead stock as you can get without a tag. So that's pretty good. It's only a size small, but that is a very sought after piece. Uh, speaking of sought after pieces, a Patagonia uh, snap tee with the, with the patch on the front and with this uh, nice print on it. That's going to do well. That's a smaller size. Um, an extra small. So it's probably a, might be a men's extra small, but... Even an extra small that's still going to do well. This is a vintage Disneyland like worker jacket. So there's a patch on it. It's even on this Dis this old Disneyland tag. Didn't look this up at all. It's one it's from one of my vendors that I buy a lot of items from. He actually threw me this item and uh, told me, "Hey, check that one out." I just said, "Okay, I'll buy it. No problem." Usually when one of my vendors wants me to buy an item that I deal with a lot and buy, you know, hundreds of items from throughout the year, then I'm probably just going to get whatever items they throw me along with whatever I want. Uh, I actually talked about this, I think, in my uh, What Sold video the other day, David James jackets. So I sold one of their like corduroy Sherpa line jackets. These are really what you want to be looking out for them. I want to say these sell for 50 bucks plus. They're like a Western bomber with this Aztec pattern on it. And those sell pretty well. Up next, a Pendleton flannel. This is an actual flannel one. Uh, size medium. Not, not the best one, but still, I mean, a minimum of $30 as long as there's no holes in it. Even if there are a few small holes, still 25 bucks. Here's a vintage L.L. Bean down fill puffer vest. Those aren't big money, but probably 25 bucks, maybe 30 bucks. Here's a vintage UCLA sweatshirt. Vintage sweatshirts from big colleges usually do pretty well. Uh, usually 30 bucks plus in most of them. Here's a Patagonia better sweater. These things, uh, these sell so good. Doesn't matter the size, doesn't matter if it's a men's or women's, this one's a men's small. Still probably a $40 item. Here's another Patagonia Better sweater. I'm guessing that this one's a women's. Oh, this is actually a Youth 2XL. Still going to be a great seller. 
Another Patagonia Snap Tee. And this one does have the patch on the front, which adds uh, quite a bit of value. Here's a Rain Spooner. This is a nice print on it. Um, it's it's not quite a, eh, I guess you would call it like a quilted print. Anytime that there's one that I can put quilted print pattern in, uh, it seems to make it sell super quick and add some value. So that should be like a 30 to $35 one. And I recently actually just sold the same one right here. Um, I don't know exactly what to call them. I usually call them like an Asian style. They have like an Asian fan on them. Sometimes they have a dragon, but any of those sell for like 40 to 50 bucks. Pendleton flannel. I'm um, just checking. This isn't the board shirt. This is just one of the regular flannels, but still going to be a pretty good piece because it's in a bigger size. Here's a big Carhartt jacket. These waterproof, I think this one's called like the Storm Defender. Yeah. So these uh, Carhartt Storm Defenders always sell for good money for me. A vintage uh, Los Angeles Raiders crew neck. Got another big jacket. I got quite a few big jackets here, but it's still that time of year. So why not get them and sell them while I can? This is a Pendleton wool jacket, but it's a full zip. Here's another Carhartt. Is this another Storm Defender? Uh, I don't think it's a Storm Defender, but uh, it is probably a waterproof one. And those still do pretty good. Ooh, this is really nice. This is a Polo Ralph Lauren corduroy full zip. Uh, that, that's got to do pretty well. Polo Ralph Lauren and corduroy, uh, that is a very good combo. Another Patagonia item. I'm pretty sure this is a downfill women's vest. Uh, when the patch is down here on the bottom, it's usually not as valuable as if it's on the chest, but still pretty good if it's downfill. And then a Polo Ralph Lauren Harrington uh, or bomber jacket. Those always sell uh, pretty easily as long as you price them right. Okay, let me go ahead and grab some more items real quick. All right, just pull out the next bag. Here's a pair of Polo Ralph Lauren shorts. These are the patchwork. Anything Polo Ralph Lauren patchwork, good to look out for. And a second pair. These ones are actually cargo, so that's probably even better. I mean, they're not going to sell for a ton of money until spring, but come springtime, those should be like $30 plus shorts. Here's a pair of vintage Levi's. These are from 99, I think. 505s, 3330s. I did get a ton of vintage Levi's, vintage Levi jackets this trip, I think. So you'll see those as they come. Pair of Carhartt pants. Uh, these aren't like double knee or anything special. And I've honestly not been picking up a lot of Carhartt pants, but that was probably from one of my vendors that I'm trying to just pick up items. Or actually, I think they set these aside for me along with uh, all these rain spooners and different stuff. So. Like I said, with my uh, vendors that I deal with often, I'm not gonna pull out a couple items out of like 30 items and say, oh, I'm not gonna buy these. Um, I'm still gonna be able to, if let's say I spent an average of $15, I'm still gonna be able to break even or make a few bucks on it. So it's not a big deal. Here's a Rain Spooner Hawaiian shirt. There's a ton of Rain Spooners. This one actually has a nice print on it and it's almost like Christmas colors with a little blue. So if I get that listed before Christmas, which eh, it's gonna be close cause it's already like the 20th, uh, I will add Christmas in the title probably. Here's a cool rain spoon. I don't think I've actually had this one before. It's a really like abstract print and I think that it's pretty unique. It's not gonna be a ton of money, but that should be a $30 shirt at the minimum. Here's this one with all the flags on it. I wanna say these are the nautical flags. Um, and those sell pretty well. This I'm going to get listed today. This is a Rain Spooner Meli Klikimaka Hawaiian shirt. This one's from 2002. If I can get it sold before Christmas, this should be a $50 shirt pretty easily. Here's a John Severson Kahala collab. This is one of the ones that's handcrafted in Hawaii. I wouldn't normally be picking this up, especially at uh, these prices. But like I said, that was just an item that the vendor had pulled out for me. 
and I think there was a couple of those, not too many of them, so not a big deal. These usually sell for about 20 bucks. If I'm really lucky, I can get about 25 bucks for them. Another rain spooner, pretty basic one. That's like a $25 rain spooner. Another Christmas Milly Kaliki Maka, uh, 2004. Let me show you guys the tag. It actually says Melly Kaliki Maka on the tag. This one's actually a 2XL too. That could easily be a $60 shirt. Like I said, if I can get it sold before Christmas, it's only five days to Christmas. So I'd have to list it today. Someone buy it today and then hopefully I ship it tomorrow and it gets to them. But some people have Christmas parties, you know, between Christmas and New Year's. So there might be some people buying it for them too. I've had this rain spooner a ton of times. It's not a super valuable one, but the surfboard ones aren't the worst. So this is a this is kind of a weird uh, Hawaiian shirt brand. It's called Diamond Head. Let me show you guys the tag. Uh, this is a vintage one, probably from the 80s. And I, there are there will be some comps for this brand that are high, but there's not a good sell through rate on it. And if you want to get it sold with any relative quickness, you're gonna to have to price it down probably in the 20 to 25 dollar range. Here's a rain spooner. That one has bunnies on it. Um, I've never had this one. I'm not sure. I'm actually gonna have to look and see what the bunnies are all about. I don't know if that's specifically an Easter one or if it just happens to have bunnies. You love to see this. Rain spooner, new with tags. Love to see it. Um, probably, I don't know if it's my favorite. It's definitely one of my top favorites. Might even be my absolute favorite. Jams World Hawaiian shirts. Uh, this is, I don't know if this is one of the Baja series ones. Uh, I could see that it is one of the racing ones. Yeah, I think it is one of the Baja ones. These sell for super good money. It says Jams Fast on it. Uh, that should be anywhere between $50 and $100 probably. I don't like a lot of Adidas stuff, but the color blocking on this, I mean, that is, that's some awesome color and a great size XL, great condition, uh, vintage Adidas. So that is one of the few Adidas pieces that I'm actually really excited to sell. Don't know about this item. Uh, I don't even know if it has any value more than like 10 bucks. This is a Levi's silver tab quarter zip shirt. Not sure how that got thrown in. Probably something the vendors had in there, so it is what it is. Here's a Pendleton Corduroy shirt. Don't know if I've ever sold a Pendleton Corduroy, but seems like a, a good collaboration of things, so it can't be too bad. Here's a Dave Matthews Band vintage shirt from 1999. I think I might have looked up comps on that. It might have been worth like 40 bucks. Second one of them. Dave Matthews Band. This is really interesting, actually. Uh, is this a sand knit jersey? It is. Okay. So this is pretty old. Uh, this is a Magic Johnson Lakers jersey. It's on this uh, McGregor sand knit tag. Have to do some research on that. Could have something good here. Um, could be only a $30 item. Could be a $130 item. Won't know until I look a little deeper, but... Either way, I'm pretty happy with that item. Let me go ahead and grab the next bag. I'm actually gonna switch these around. Can I move all of this? Let me try to move all of this over to here. Okay. All right, I got the next bag of items. This is honestly way too many items for a for one thrift haul, but. I mean, how often am I going to have a $10,000 thrift haul? So I want it all to be in one video. That way I can look back on it and enjoy it. Here is a vintage Mickey and Mouse. This is on a Mickey Unlimited tag made in the USA. Crew neck. Here is a Mercedes Benz, probably like an employee jacket. Those are, those are probably sneaky. Uh, a lot of the times with these higher-end car brands, uh, those jackets can be kind of sneaky. This is a really cool Polo Ralph Lauren piece. Uh, like the, I don't know, is that the British flag, I guess? But that's a cool piece, really unique. Here's a Polo Ralph Lauren flannel. 
no pony. If it has no pony, it's definitely not gonna be as valuable. Um, this is this is all stuff I think from one of my vendors that I buy a bunch of different stuff, and um, this stuff is probably well under the average of fifteen dollars per item. So might not be all of the best items, but still still gonna be some decent items in here. Uh, this is a Disney Hawaiian shirt. Most of those do surprisingly well. Another Disney Hawaiian shirt. This is a nice little piece. It's a Izod Lacoste vintage one. Made in the USA. Knit sweater. It's just cotton. I wish it was like a better fabric, but that's pretty nice. On a nutmeg tag, that's a good vintage uh, like athletic apparel tag. This is a USC Trojans one. I'll show you guys the nutmeg tag. Made in USA. Uh, Caleb sells my new buddy from YouTube. He also has a YouTube channel. If you guys aren't uh, watching his videos, go watch him. He sells a ton. Uh, he has like a super high 90 day total, sells a bunch, does it full time, and makes a bunch of money. So if you want to learn some other things, go watch him. But I think he was telling me, uh, I've heard about Boy Scout shirts before, and I've actually sold some before. But he said it's dependent on the patches. And I thought this one had a Eagle Scout patch. Um, I was... my. Uh, me and my brother did some Boy Scouts. My brother became an Eagle Scout, and I know that's like the highest you could get. So I thought maybe the Eagle Scout patch might add some value. Here's a Pendleton jacket. I actually recently just sold, I think it's sold already, this same exact jacket. It's not a super valuable one. That's only like a $25 jacket. It's just cotton. Maybe polyester, but no wool. Um, This... I'm not. Hmm. I'm honestly not exactly sure why I picked this one up. I know it's super old. I mean, look at this tag. It's probably from some like school or something. It has this patch on it. But I don't usually like going down some crazy rabbit hole trying to figure out what it is. And I probably won't, honestly. I'll probably just list it as some vintage uh try to figure out the age of it based on the tag and then just list it for a cardigan for like a high school from you know the 50s or whatever it is here's a pendleton flannel only a size small those are still decent as long as they're not super shrunk up or have holes even in size small they're going to sell well here's a size large this one is a pearl snap but it is the wool one they make the pearl snaps that are just cotton and then the pearl snaps that are wool uh, I don't know this one. I'm curious if this was new with tags because it still has like this little tag on it right there. But this is a this is a board shirt, which is one of the most valuable ones. But it says a size XL. Oh yeah, the buttons are going the women's side. Okay, yeah, women's XL. There are some uh, small like moth holes in it though. Pendleton new with tags. So this is only a cotton one, I think. But it is new with tag. This one's called the Mason. This looks like a uh, like a Costco tag. I wonder if they were selling these at Costco. So that's going to definitely... If they sold those at Costco, the value is going to probably be super low. But I picked up two of them. They're new with tags. I mean, worst case scenario, I'm guessing 20 bucks. But this is a good one. This is what you're looking out for. Vintage Ralph Lauren knit sweater, big graphic. This is a guy, is that a guy hunting or fishing uh, with his dog? Uh, it is wool, hand knit, made in Hong Kong. That's probably pretty valuable. If I was just going to guess a number on the low side, I would say 75 bucks. Let me grab another bag. Next bag, I'm going to put this to the side to list today as well. This is a, it's from the 80s. What year is this one? This is the Rain Spooner Millie Kalikimaka, the Christmas one. Can't find the year. If I was just going to guess, I would guess either 87, 88, or 89. I can't remember. I'm sure I've sold this exact same one before. 
Here is the yellow rain spooner tag I talk about a lot. I think the lady on there is like actually supposed to be topless. And those are from the 80s. This, I mean, if I would have got this listed like a week or two ago, shame on me. I've actually had these items for a while. I've just been processing through so much inventory. This could have been like a $80 shirt. It might still be. So I'll set it to the side and see what happens. Try to get it listed today and hopefully sold. Here's another rain spooner from the 80s. This is a pretty good one. I mean, any of them from the 80s is pretty good. This one's an XL on the yellow tag. I think I got uh, this same shirt. I might've got the same exact shirt from another vendor. Um, like I said, I will use the keyword quilted because those do look like little quilt patches on them and that's gonna help it sell fast and for the most money. Another one. Another one where I'm going to use the keyword quilted. This looks like it's probably one of the 4th of July ones. And if I was going to guess early, early, either late 90s or early 2000s, uh, 4th of July rain spooner. Here's a Ralph Lauren. Uh, this almost has a patchwork look to it, but it's not patchwork. I'm not sure if I'll use that, if that might be a little bit too misleading if I put patchwork in there in the title because it's not patchy at all. It just kind of has that look, but it is a made in the USA one, uh, Ralph Lauren. Pendleton flannel, size large. This one has definitely been shrunk and I hate, I hate selling the ones that were shrunk, um, but it'll still be like a 20, $25 item. Um, I honestly don't know about this Hawaiian shirt. I don't know if I've ever sold this brand. Maybe I looked it up. Probably not. It was probably just from one of my vendors that set it aside for me. And I feel like the number of items that I've said that is starting to add up. But I'm sure I'll at minimum break even on those handful of items. Like I said, I got 268 items. So even if there's 10 items that are ones that maybe I wouldn't have wanted, but the vendors wanted me to get, or like they had them in my pile or my bag or whatever, then so be it. I'll break even on those 10 items. Oh, I remember now. I remember. I was making a bulk deal. The guy did have a whole bag of rain spooners for me and he did throw a few other ones. This is another one of those. Um, that they, they were like basically throw-ins. We did the deal and he had these on the side and he's like, you want those? And I even told him not really. <laughs> so we kind of just threw them in there for like a couple bucks each or something to bring the average price for the other ones down. Uh, this one I think is a Dragon Ball Z. I don't know for sure. Like I said, there, there was a couple of them that that weren't exactly ones that I wanted, but they're in there. So this one is a no boundaries. Those might be like $10 shirts just to get them moving quickly. Uh, this one is Carmen Western shirt. It's a women's, but it is a vintage one and it's the Kenny Rogers collaboration. I've never had the Kenny Rogers collab with Carmen. Uh, it's a, it's a mediocre Western shirt brand, but if they have good prints like this or they have the smile pockets, or different things that are gonna add value, then they sell just fine. Um, I don't know if I've had any women's ones, but uh, they're still probably minimum 20, maximum like 30. Uh, here's another Western shirt. This one's called Tex-Mex, another women's one. Like I said, there was a handful of shirts from this, uh, from this vendor that we just did a deal for all of them because there are some really good ones that I got from him that I wanted. And this is the last one. This one's made in Canada, I think. So usually stuff that's made in Canada does pretty well. All right, now the items that I actually wanted. Uh, this brand, I've had this brand a few times and I want to say I had a USC one of this Hawaiian brand, Kainui. And I want to say it sold for like at least 50 bucks. This one's a UCLA one. So I would expect it to do pretty similar. Here's a vintage Stussy shirt, button up. I'm pretty sure this one's made in the USA. Here's another Stussy one. This one is sick. Look at the print on this. Stussy Hawaiian. Let me just double check while we're here. Um, 
Yep, made in USA, the older paper tag. I mean, that is sweet. I'm probably going to ask way too much for this, and it's probably going to sit for way too long, but that's how it goes sometimes. Sometimes there's just items that you like, and you price them a little bit too high, and you know you try to be cognitive of, cognitive of it when you're doing it, but sometimes you do it anyways. Here's a rain spooner with the MLB hats all over it. Here is another rain spooner. This is on a newer tag, but this is, so this might just look like a plain old rain spooner and it might, it might be, but a lot of the times with these ones that just seem different, I see so many rain spooners that I know when the colors, the print, it's just a little bit different than what you normally see. And I wouldn't be surprised if I could get like 35, 40 bucks for this one, even though it's a newer one, it's not a vintage one and it seems pretty basic uh, just because it's a lot different than what you normally see as far as the colorway goes. There's another rain spooner. I don't really like, so this one's kind of like on the contrary to that. I don't really like this print on it. Um, when they have like these weird kind of squared out pictures in them, it kind of just breaks up the pattern and I think it makes them just a lot less desirable. Here's a rain spooner for a college. I think this one is the Texas Longhorns. And so the college and like same with the sports team ones just depends on the demand for that. I'm going to guess Texas Longhorns though. Plenty of demand. Here's a new with tags rain spooner. I mean any new with tags rain spooner is going to be great. USC Trojan rain spooner. Those always do super well. This one isn't a 2XL. So, I mean, in spring or summer, that could be 50, 60 bucks. So maybe right now, 40 bucks. Probably list it on the high side and then see if an offer comes in and I want to move it quick. The LA Dodger rain spooners are always amazing. This is a newer tag. So they're probably selling this one right now, honestly, or within the past couple of years. So... I'm not sure if that's going to add value on this specific one, but I would guess like 45 bucks for the Dodger ones. Here's another rain spooner, pretty basic one, but it is in a big size, 2XL. 2XL rain spooners sell well in any print. Here's an XL rain spooner. Those are pretty basic prints. So this is another one looks like a pretty basic print, but I don't see a lot of black ones. Almost all my black ones sell quickly, black and orange. Uh, so that's an interesting colorway in a size XL. That one could be a little bit of a sleeper. Pretty basic one. That one is not a sleeper. That one's not going to do that well. Maybe 25 bucks if I'm lucky. Here's another one. This one isn't as bad as the last one, but it's still pretty basic, like 25 bucks. This is nice. This is Nissan, uh, like the three, 350Z or the 370Z or the, this one says 300ZX and it's new with tags. So when they are a rain spooner with a specific car model, so like this one is specifically for the Nissans and the Nissan 300ZX, uh, those usually do really well. I think I've sold a Nissan one before, but not this print, it was a little bit different. Here's a vintage 80s rain spooner. Those sell really well. This one is a little bit beat up. And a lot of the times they are going to be beat up. I mean, they're 30, what? No. 40, you know, 40-ish years old, 30-something years old. And uh, they've probably, you know, been worked in by someone that uh, works in Hawaii. Here's a new with tags. I think I've had, I don't know, four of that same exact shirt new with tags. This is a 3XL. This one's a 4XL. I had them all in 3XLs before, and they all sold really well. So This is a uh, like a Chevy truck one. Though, so like that's an example of a car one that's probably not the best. That might only be like a $30 car one. This is for the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. Yeah, that's that's a great great sports team name. But this one is new with tags. So the Angels, the Anaheim Angel ones, don't normally sell very well. But being new with tags, that's definitely going to add quite a bit of value. I'm actually going to set that one aside to get listed today. Maybe someone will buy that one as a Christmas present real quick. 
Another rain spooner. Oh, I've actually, this is the lifeguard one. I think I recently sold the lifeguard. Was it the rain spooner? Now I'm getting confused. I think I actually recently sold the lifeguard jams world, which was really valuable, but I'm sure a lifeguard rain spooner, probably a pretty good one. Closer to that $40 range. Rain spooner. Not sure who these characters are on there, but it looks like there's cigars. Uh, the cigar. Tommy Bahamas do really well. I don't think I've ever sold a cigar rain spooner, so we'll see. This is a, I've actually sold this shirt before. It's a rain spooner Warner Brothers collaboration. And since the Disney collabs are so crazy good, I thought the Warner Brothers ones would be good. And I think some of them are, but this one wasn't that great. More of like a 30-ish item, 30-ish dollar item if I remember correctly. Here's a, what's this, Cal Berkeley Rain Spooner. Never had a Cal Berkeley one. I, I promise there's other items that aren't Rain Spooner and they're coming after this. I, I won't grab another bag of Rain Spooner, I promise. Uh, here's a kind of basic Rain Spooner, but the colorway is pretty good. Uh, this is a good collab that you want to look out for the Rain Spooners. Dietrich Vares. Most of that stuff does well. Uh, I don't know if you guys will be able to even see that. This one has sailboats on it. The sailboat ones are not the best ones of the collab, but that's still a $30, $35 item. Let me grab another bag. All right, if you like vintage Levi's and vintage denim, then this bag is probably gonna be pretty good for you. We're not talking like crazy, and there are some, uh, there are some new age ones in here too. Like the first one I pulled off the top is a new age Levi's denim jacket. I actually been telling my wife I want a denim one. And I always, I come across them all the time and I just never keep one. So when I find one that fits me, I'm going to keep it. I feel like everyone needs to have a denim jacket in their closet. But here's a, this one's new with tags. Size medium. These are kind of hard to get out. It's a Sherpa lined corduroy in a size medium. Levi's. Here's a Levi's denim vest with like an American flag print on it. All right. I thought there was, maybe maybe there is some, I thought there was more vintage ones, but these are still more modern ones. Levi's, Sherpa lined in a size medium. Okay, this one's a vintage one, I think from uh, this one might be from like the early 2000s. I want to say that was like a 2002 tag, if I was reading it correctly. Uh, this one's a size large. Another one that's size large. This one's also probably like earlier 2000s, not as old as the last one. Uh, here's another one. This one's a size small. This one's black denim, and from my experience, the black denim does better. This is like a really faded, it almost is starting to look blue. Maybe it's a really dark blue because it's so faded. Uh, denim, I think that one's only a size small. The good thing about the size small Levi denim jackets that aren't like Sherpa line, no lining, they're a lot easier to squeeze into a padded flat rate for shipping purposes. Um. I'm not sure about this one. I'll have to look and make sure that this one's authentic. I'm not, this tag says size EL. I'm not sure what that's all about, but like I said, we'll look into it, make sure it's authentic. All right, here's a little bit older one. This one is made in Canada. Size 16, 18, so that might be a youth size. But um, this one is an older one, like I said, made in Canada. And it has like that nice acid wash on it. Vintage Guest Jeans. These are like a wide leg uh, tapered fit. And these are in a smaller size, like 20 or no, 30 and 32 waist. But those are actually good sizes for these kind of items. Usually younger people, littler people are going to be picking up those. That was another pair of vintage guests jeans. Here's a pair of vintage Levi's. 
these are the made in Mexico ones. Those are five seventeens. Good size though. Like I said, a smaller size, but that looks like a pretty long inseam. That's what you're kind of looking for in the vintage denim. A lot of it, like a relatively small waist, obviously not tiny, maybe like the 32 ish um, with the longer inseams. Another pair of guest denim vintage. Here's a pair of Levi's from, uh, it's probably like the earlier nineties Levi's. These are black. They're not like a faded blue or anything. These are black and they are the orange tab. And this is the orange tab without the Levi. It just has the R for the trademark. So I'm not a Levi expert by any means, but I do know how to do research on eBay very well. So, uh, it won't be too hard for me to figure out their value and get them listed accurately. Another pair of Levi's. These are late nineties. 560s. I'm not sure. Some sometime in the 90s. These are like a wide, like 561s. Loose straight leg fit. Those are probably really well. Those are on trend right now for sure. These are a little bit bigger. Let's see what are these. These are five sixties. These are made in Mexico, probably like early two thousands. Hopefully this table is pretty strong because it is getting pretty packed. After this, I'll pick up the camera and show you guys real quick. And I don't even think that we're even halfway. Five fifties. Uh, I think from the late nineties. All right. Let me show you guys. He said, that's the table right there. We're probably gonna have to stack it all the way up to the roof. But let me grab the next bag. Next bag, this is a cool sweater. Just look up the style code. Oh, that one, that might be paint on there. So, but as you can see, it was pretty cheap. I probably bundled it with some items too. There's a $10 tag on there. Um. Let me show you guys right here. I don't know where the tags are at, but cool. This is a cool like bandana print rain spooner. Paisley bandana print keywords that I'll be using. Nice. Some more Patagonia full zip, uh, better sweater vest Patagonia. Probably a women's, but doesn't matter. Those sell amazing men's, women's kids. Here is a snap tee, uh, women's, but it does have the patch on the front chest, so that's going to be good. Here's a cool shirt. I want to say this is probably linen. Yeah, it is. Linen cotton blend. Cool. And uh, it's hard. It's actually hard. This is a vintage flea market, so it's hard to find some of these... Uh, more modern brands there, but there are some vendors that will bring it out, bring out some of it sometimes. This is really cool. I don't know if it's that valuable, but it's almost like a denim Hawaiian shirt. Like it has a Hawaiian look to it, but it is like a lighter weight denim and it has like this acid washy look on it. I thought that was really cool. So I don't pick up a lot of the vintage gotcha Hawaiian shirts, but the print on this one was so amazing and uh, had a nice little patch here on the front and the condition is probably never worn. So that's pretty cool for a 90s piece. Here's a Carhartt FR denim shirt. So fire resistant. Here's a dragonfly shirt. I talk about these all the time. I find them. These are usually like $25 shirts. Uh, the ones with the flames usually do the best. Make sure you use like the keywords Y2K, things like that. Uh, this is a Jams World set. It's a women's set. Um, let me see if I can actually show you. I'll turn it around. But it has the shirt and like, is this a pants or skirt? I think it's a skirt. Yeah, pants, skirt set, Jams World. 
I don't normally like selling women's items, especially something like that, like just staging it and everything, but I'm guessing that I got a great deal on it. Because if not, I wouldn't have wanted to put in the work to change. It just doesn't go with my normal setup, my normal flow of how I list items. So that's, it's just not usually worth it, but I got that one. So here's a Disney Spirit jersey, tie-dye. I like selling those a lot. I find them quite a bit here in Southern California. Here's a vintage Disney shirt. This one isn't a small size. Could possibly even be a youth size, but I'm pretty sure people like this one. I've seen this one before. I don't know if I've sold it before, but I've seen it before. This is an example of a Polo Ralph Lauren Polo shirt that is cool and uh, probably gonna do pretty well. It's made in the USA. It's probably only a size large. But this print on it has a pony on the front, has a cool print, made in the USA. Uh, that's one that I'm willing to pick up. The more basic ones, just leave them behind. This is a vintage Billabong like lightweight hoodie. Uh, anything modern Billabong, I'm going to leave unless it's probably a collab or maybe new with tags. But vintage Billabong does a lot better. It's kind of like Quicksilver. All the modern Quicksilver stuff pass. The vintage stuff can do a lot better. I actually didn't even look these up, but uh, I'm going to assume that they're pretty good because I think the OP ones, so the Ocean Pacific of these, and there might even be a pair of those in there here too, I can't remember, uh, do really well. But this is a vintage Billabong corduroy short. A little patch on the back. I want to say there's like three or four pairs of those. Another one, Billabong corduroy. Corduroy stuff has just been selling great for me, so when stuff's selling well, just keep selling it. This is a pair of OP ones. These ones aren't super old, though. These are probably like uh, early 2000s. Maybe late 90s, but probably early 2000s. Another pair of the Billabong ones. Like I said, those were all corduroy. Oh, there's another pair. Billabong. So... We'll have to look a little deeper, make sure. I didn't even look up the comps on those, honestly. Here's a pair of Carhartt FR jeans, fire resistant. They're new. They still have this tag on the back of them. They're not a, they're like a really big size, 40 by 30, so. This is this is a cool piece right here. This is a vintage Quicksilver piece. Uh, these vintage Quicksilver pieces, especially if they're made in the USA, this one is USA made, do really well. There's a patch on it. I actually, I've had a collector buy from me quite a few times. There's a specific like model of a jacket, I think, that's really sought after. Um, but usually the vintage Quicksilver stuff made in USA does decently. Here is a Avi Kahala. Like I said, I don't pick up a lot of the Kahalas, but this one did have a really good print on it. Rain Spooner. Uh, this one's a women's. Has an interesting print on it, though. I think that this tower might be coming down soon, but I'm going to try to push it into the corner. Hopefully it doesn't. Here's a Rain Spooner women's. I think it's a women's vest. I'm not sure if that's custom or if it was made like that. But I'm the Rain Spooner guy, so I need to get to the bottom of it. And I will, next time I talk to you guys, I'll know if that is made by Rain Spooner like that or if someone custom made it and how valuable it is. Uh, this is actually, a, eh, I don't know. Usually these car ones for the Rain Spooners don't do great unless there's something specific. But this one is specifically for the Thunderbird, so might be better. I've never sold the Thunderbird one. So this is a good brand. I'm not sure about this exact collab. This is Roosevelt's and this one's the Sandlot. But those shirts uh, usually do really well. So I'm assuming that one's not going to be any different. Rain Spooner. See how it looks kind of faded. I'm sure most of you guys know this by now, but that just means that it's a reverse print. So if you look on the inside and like the outside has like this weird... Not like heathered print, but kind of like faded 
print like the inside of a shirt would look and then the inside of it doesn't have that then that's a reverse print and those are actually usually more sought after uh, a lot of people like the reverse print and that's what they're looking for so I include that as a keyword here's another good collab uh, for rain spooner Alfred Shaheen if you guys ever find vintage Alfred Shaheen shirts not rain spooner uh, that was probably one of my biggest sales this year uh, it was I want to say over $200 uh, just for a long sleeve Alfred Shaheen Hawaiian shirt but the but even the rain spooner cloud ones do really well here's another Avi Kahala Hawaiian shirt I'm sure that this one's handcrafted yep handcrafted in Hawaii Probably got just a, a good deal on those. I would say probably around $10 mark. And those sell for about 20 to 25 Here's another Dragonfly shirt. Uh, it does have a unique print on it with like these bulldogs, crown. Uh, just that's, that's what you're looking for. Just those, you know, kind of unique but still enough people that would be interested in it to buy it. If it's too unique and too crazy, then th there might only be you know one or two buyers and they're hard to find but here's another Avi Kahala Hawaiian shirt I think I've sold that exact one for like 25 bucks before another one DJ Khaled another one here's a rain spooner probably not a very good one but this is another buyer that I, or another seller that I buy in bulk from and so I probably got that one that's not very good. That's probably like a $20 one. Usually when they have golf stuff on them for the rain spooners, they're not very good. And then we have one like this that is a Dodgers one in a, and it doesn't have a size tag, but probably an XL or two, that's probably a two XL. So that's probably a $50 shirt. Here's a Stussy Pearl Snap long sleeve. Pretty basic print but it has like a definite vest Western vibe it has like a little yoke on it and here is a Levi's denim shirt that's it for that bag on to the next one as long as the items don't fall all right next bag Patagonia better sweater love to see it I mean those are easy those are easy money fast sellers this is cool. This is a Nike SB jacket. Um, is it like an anorak? Yeah, it's kind of yeah, it's like an anorak with a little like half zip, quarter zip, size XL. It's a bit thicker. I wouldn't say it's like a thick canvas, but it's kind of like a lighter weight canvas. Uh, that's pretty cool. Might have to try that on. Here's like a Patagonia soft. Uh, I don't know if I quite call this a soft shell, but it does have the hit on the chest. Vintage 80s Levi's Sherpa line denim vest. Those aren't huge money, but I mean, those are usually like 35 bucks. This one actually seems in pretty good condition too, which is not always the case for those. This is a nice Wrangler. This is a denim pearl snap vintage one. Unique color. Next, this is a vintage Quicksilver corduroy Sherpa line. All the keywords. I don't think this is a made in USA one, but it's definitely an older tag, probably like late 90s. It was made in Hong Kong. So, still vintage. T shirt. What do we got here? Oh, that's cool. This is a vintage. Uh, Los Angeles Dodgers Nike t-shirt Nike team shirt when I say vintage this could be like early 2000s this could be like 2005 so not technically vintage but I'll still call it vintage and it is uh, new with tags vintage Lee denim shirt it's a little bit more than like a regular shirt maybe like a jacket Right, it's a big Carhartt snap button, flannel lined, shackets shirt, whatever you want to call it. 
after seeing all these items, like what's just running through my head kind of with all the jackets and heavy items is like the shipping cost. Uh, items like this haul is going to add, you know, maybe a little bit to my average shipping cost because even just a shirt like this is probably going to be over a pound. This is just a Levi's snap button. Ooh, these snaps on this one though. Look at those snaps. You guys see that? Almost has like this zebra print to it. That's cool. A red denim pearl snap. But like I was saying, these are uh, probably over a pound just for that item. So even if I can fit it into a flat rate envelope, that's still going to be $7.60. My average shipping cost is around $5.50. So like I said, there's going to be a lot of items that are over the average. So that's just what it takes sometimes to sell these bigger items. But also there's going to be a lot of jackets in here that sell for 50 plus dollars. So the good with the bad. Here's another denim Levi's. The black, like I said, black denim usually does better. I think just because it's a little bit more common for the Levi's. Here's a Roper Western shirt. Not the most amazing brand, but that print is really cool. I think this was new with tags. Yeah, it is. It has like this paint splatter look all over it. New with tags, Levi's denim vest. Having to like throw the items up onto the... It's probably as tall as me now, the stack, but it is on a table. Here's a vintage Gap denim vest. I honestly like just selling vintage Gap stuff and making some money on it. Just for the fact of saying like I sold Gap and profited on it rather than actually making the money. Here is a Ralph Lauren. This one's called the Blake. Uh, that Madra. I think this is a Madras plaid. I don't know if it's offset enough. I think the Madras might be a little more offset, but maybe not. I'll still call it Madras probably. Polo Ralph Lauren. Kind of basic, but a little bit out of the ordinary with those kind of pockets. Patagonia uh, Polo, which is like a little embroidery, but it does say Patagonia on the front. I'm guessing some of those items I got for pretty cheap. Stussy baseball style jersey. It's a crazy print on here. This is another Roper. This one is a pearl snap. Like I said, crazy print. Western shirt and unique print. Peanut butter and jelly. Peanut butter and profit. Here is a Polo Ralph Lauren. Another thing looking for uniqueness, those stripes are very unique. All right, last item from this bag. Levi's Pearl Snap Men's XL. Honestly, probably looked kind of good on me, but that one's probably going to get sold. It looks like it's never been worn. Next bag. Oh my gosh, how much denim did I buy? Here is a pair of Carhartt. Not double knees, no. Nope, not double knees. These are kind of like a weird, but they're carpenter. I don't know. Carhartt pants, like I said, just haven't been selling that well for me. Uh, here is a orange tab Levi's. What are these? The, I don't know, they say they're 31 by 34. I wonder if they're him, but uh, they might be 34. If so, that's probably a pretty good size. Another pair, orange tab, Levi's. These ones have the patch missing off the back. What's this, a pair of silver tabs? Yeah, Levi's silver tabs. I don't think that these are old ones. Maybe like early 2000s. Those are like super wide. Another pair of the silver tabs. These one are the actual baggies. Those are going to sell well. Five Oh ones, Levi five Oh ones. They are in the black denim. 
All right, we got to get moving a little faster. Uh, Levi's denim jacket, black. A vintage Lee denim jacket. These are okay. If you find them in like the flannel or the blanket linings, those actually sell surprisingly well for a uh, Lee denim item. I think this one's new. Yeah, it is new. I don't know if the tag got ripped off. But uh, Levi's with like a little patchwork. That is patchwork from the factory, not like aftermarket. Vintage North Face Gore-Tex jackets. Surprisingly good condition. Here's another North Face Extreme jacket, USA made. Okay, I don't, I don't know if we can throw any more stuff up there, but all right, I'll keep going. Another one of these Levi's uh, patchwork jackets. Levi's red denim. This is like, those are newer. Those are all newer age ones. This one's like a peach colorway. Still Levi's. Pink one. And okay, last item for this bag. Corduroy. Corduroy jacket. Levi's. Next bag. I knew before I even pulled this one out, just based on the print, that it was very likely that this was an Alfred Shaheen rain spooner. You're going to find this exact print often with that collaboration. Still, I think it's 20, like probably a $30 one. A vintage Desert Storm. I've sold uh, some of the vintage Desert Storm shirts before. They're not big money, like 15 bucks. Vintage Marine Corps t-shirt. I'm guessing this stuff uh, was cheap. I think I remember actually, what did he say? Was it a $5 rack? I can't remember now. Another vintage, I don't even know what the print is. Some Eagles for Nebraska. Vintage from like the 90s. Okay. What's this? Vintage Looney Tunes crew neck. The uh, the pile is about to touch the ceiling. Uh, might have to start stacking some of it somewhere else. Uh, this is called the Bronson Manufacturing Co. This is my first time finding this. It felt kind of nice in quality. I think I looked it up and uh, it was actually, I did look it up, but I think that there wasn't a lot of comps or something. I decided just to take a gamble on it. Like I said, I'm pretty sure that all of these items were five bucks each. Panhandle Slim Pearl Snap. Not the most amazing brand, but that print is going to sell it easy for $25, $30. Here's an Eli Cattleman, another not great one. Like I said, I think I was paying 5 bucks each for these. Pearl Snap Denim, though, and it's in a 4X. Okay, I think I need to start stacking these somewhere else. I'm just going to throw a bag right here. I'll just throw them into this bag for now. Vintage Super Bowl 32 t-shirt for the Broncos and Packers. Uh, rain Spooner. Is this a 2XL? Nice. Like I said, almost any 2XL Rain Spooner is going to sell well. Even though that print's not great. And then here's another Roosevelt piece. I only found a couple of Roosevelt pieces ever, I think. This one's ET. This one wasn't five bucks. I think I bought just this one item from a, from one vendor and it was $15, but it's new with tags. Next bag. Here's a Polo Ralph Lauren, like a lightweight hoodie, but this one is like the rugby style. Almost anything rugby style Polo does really well. Rain Spooner. I wonder how many Hawaiian shirts I got. For the middle of winter, I got a lot of Hawaiian shirts, but this one's a Chevy one. This is cool. I actually got a couple of these. 
Rock Mount Ranch Wear. That is a great Western shirt brand to be looking out for. This is crazy. Great pattern. Uh, nice detail. The only thing is this one's a size, maybe a size, a 15.5 I think it is. There's the tag, Rock Mount Ranch Wear. Keep your eye out for Rock Mount Ranch Wear Western shirts. Most of them sell for like 40 plus. I wonder if these are all the same size. I think they are. All the same shirt, same size. There's three of them. Like I said, this is one of the better Western shirt brands that you want to find though. Here's a Puma BMW uh, sweatshirt. Oh, this is cool. It's just a little Henley, but that print, look at that print. Anything Polo Ralph Lauren with that print, I'm not going to pass on. Uh, this is just like a thermal Henley. So it's probably only 30 bucks, but it's a cool item just to put in the store. Uh, there was multiple of these. I'll show you guys all of them. They're in size large. They're Polo Ralph Lauren. They're like the lightweight hoodies. They do have the Polo on the front, the little logo on the front, which is what you want with Polo items. Those lightweight hoodies still do pretty decently. There you go. I'm trying not to unfold. Oh, I'm just unfold all of them. Who cares? And these are all in great condition. There's probably like three or four of these, maybe even more than that. There's the third one, lightweight hoodie polo. The fourth one, if I can get it pulled out here. Wait, oh, okay. Pony on there still good. I think these are all size large. And another one, DJ Khaled, another one. That's a good colorway right there. Probably include like Easter on that one as a keyword. Just cause, or like something like that. Pastel, pastel, pastel colors. Another Polar Ralph Lauren. Okay, that's it for those. Here's a Woolrich flannel. This is a pretty thick one but it is an actual wool one. Don't pick up the Woolrich, oops. I'm trying to keep the items from touching the ground and getting dirty. Uh, the Woolrich stuff I was saying, don't pick up the Woolrich stuff that's not wool. It's usually not that good. Here's just a Patagonia organic cotton button up. Very basic. Uh, okay. Here is a LL Bean. It's not chamoy. It's chamois. If you guys can see that word right there, it's spelled C H A M O I S. Pronounced chamois, as I've learned from my buddy Caleb Sells. But that makes no sense. But that's what it's called. And you can tell instantly that they're the chamois shirts just by the feel. They have like a super soft feel. They're almost like a flannel, but just super soft. It's a rain spooner, pretty basic one. And, oh, this is a rain spooner. Wow, I'm really happy with this rain spooner. This one, it's only a size medium, but that print, like I said, I just know from, from dealing with so many of them, like that print is a unique print. That colorway, like the pas pastel, the pastel colors, it's just unique. That's it for that bag. Let me grab the next one. All right. I saved the worst two bags for last. This was like 42 mostly North Face jackets. Um, it's one of my vendors that I buy tons, probably the most items from every time. And there was a, a full rack of a bunch of like North Face jackets. I think there's a couple of Patagonia jackets. But I didn't really want to buy all of them. But I said, hey, if you want to sell them really cheap, like I'll take them off your hands. Ended up settling at 300 bucks for I think 42 jackets. So what's that like seven bucks or so each? So pretty cheap. There are some like kids ones, some women's ones, like I said, uh, youth. So they might not all have a ton of value, but like this is a pretty basic, just North Face full full zip, uh, like one of the soft jackets. But that's probably I'm guessing like a twenty dollars plus shipping item. All right, next up here is a youth 
Most of these are like that soft sherpa -y, or like the soft, I don't even know what you actually call this. The soft, not sherpa, but it's like soft. That one's a men's one. Here's a women's one. This one's like a little bit deeper pile. Keep going. These North Face jackets, they were all from the deal. So these might do a little better, like these soft shell jackets. Uh, this one's a men's one, men's XL. This one looks like something like a ski rescue person would wear. That stack is probably getting too big on the ground even. Got clothes everywhere. Another soft shell. Might even just be able to get my money back in a couple of these. Uh, okay, a couple. Not a couple, but like 10. <laughs> if there's like 10 of these little bit nicer jackets, could probably get most of my money back in those. Um, like I said, I didn't want to. I even told the guy, I was like, I don't really want to buy them, but I will. And... He accepted the offer that I thought was too low, but he obviously wanted to move them too. So now they're mine and I should still make some money on it. This is like a tiny one. This is a, this is like a toddler, 4T. Might even wash that up and let uh, my littlest one wear that. I have a three-year-old and a five-year-old daughter. Here's another youth one, youth small. It's a cool print on it though. Here's a vest. North Face, Men's XL. Like those fleece vests. What's this? Eh, it's like a lightweight, like... Reminds me of like a Foot Joy type rain jacket. Here's a bigger, thicker North Face one. Men's large, long. Like I said, I paid uh, 300 bucks for all 42 of these. So I think that was a pretty good deal. You guys actually let me know in the comments if you've made it this far. I don't even know. Maybe we're an hour in or something. Uh, if you guys would have passed on this deal for these jackets, if it's not worth the work. Because most of these, especially even like those just kind of fleece, middleweight sweater jackets... Those are still gonna have to ship priority mail or like heavier UPS ground. So they're probably gonna cost seven to $10 to ship. So let me know if you guys would've made the deal if you thought that it was good. All 42 of these sweatshirts and jackets for 300 bucks. Like I said, it's mostly North Face. Another North Face, this is a youth one. Has like the uh, logo all over print. Uh, it's probably another youth or women's one. This is probably going to get boring here, me just going through these. That's why I saved it till last. But if you guys really want to see everything I bought, all 268 items, then I will show you all 268 items. Here's a bigger, thicker jacket. Uh, it's not any special line or anything, I don't think. Uh, high vent. But it is a pretty substantial jacket, so still probably 30 bucks maybe. And oh, this is a vintage REI one. Vintage REI. All right, there's one more bag of these jackets. That wasn't all 42 of them. Let me grab the other bag real quick. All right, those jackets fell over. They're all over my floor, but let's just get through these. I'm almost done. Men's large. That one's actually in really good condition. Uh, another men's, men's medium. I think the men's one should do decent. I don't see a men's one of those selling for less than like 20 bucks. Unless it's like a really lightweight one. As I say that, I pick one up that I think is lightweight and <laughs> probably only worth like 15. But like I said, an average of seven bucks per. I don't know, I think it's fine. Men's large. Quarter zip, a little bit thicker quarter zip. So this is like a sweatshirt, North Face sweatshirt. It is a full zip and it does have like not the knit material on it. So I will probably call that a jacket even. That way I can get the most for it I can. Here's like a North Face better sweater uh, rip off.
This one's actually really nice. It's like a blue soft shell, full zip. Probably one of the less valuable ones. This might even be a youth hoodie. So that one might be like break even at selling it for 10 or 12 bucks plus shipping. It's a pretty nice like Sherpa. All right, just a few more here, guys. Hang in there, only a few more. Camo, this is a youth size. I have no idea about the youth ones because I don't sell very much youth stuff, so those might only be break even at 10 or 12 bucks plus shipping. It's a women's. That one's actually pretty nice, though. Good color for a women's one. Pink. North Face, it's probably a youth. Seems pretty small. It's actually a pretty nice full zip. Mm, a little dirty. You might have to wash this one, but. All right, another North Face. It's a little bit thicker. Has like the uh, two different materials on it with the Sherpa on the bottom. Another soft shell. I don't sell a lot of North Face because I don't usually think it sells very well, so. It's usually priced like 15 or 20 bucks for a North Face jacket like that in my thrift store, so I don't pick them up. Um, so I'm not exactly sure the value on most of those. I'm not a big North Face seller. I'll pick up like unique things or specific things, but we're going to uh, get some schooling here. This is the Summit Series. Not sure if that adds any value. Uh, after these 40 or so North Face items, though, I'll have a lot more knowledge on what to look out for and what not to. Another soft shell, but I'm sure that these soft shells are the most valuable ones. Uh, and then these last two items are vintage Patagonia. Uh, this one's made in Taiwan. Jackets. Do they even have a patch at the bottom or anywhere? No. No patch. Yeah, so uh, Patagonia with no patch. Not uh, not going to have a ton of value. Nice. This one does have a patch. Vintage Patagonia full zip. So that one, made in USA. That one could be like a $35, $40 piece. It's not like a super high quality one. All right, guys. I think that's it. Unless I missed a bag. I don't think I did. 268 items spent over four grand should sell everything for well over 10,000 bucks plenty of profit to be made lots of work and Here is the end result There is this there's all my cleaning supplies. This is my garage, but look at this tower of clothes and there's also a bunch more on the ground but if you guys are still here, thank you so much for watching. That one was super long, lots of great items, lots of items for you to be on the lookout for, and tons of profit to be made here. So if you want to watch these items actually get sold, how much they actually sell for, how long they take to sell, you can watch my What Sold series where I show you my daily eBay sales every single day. doesn't matter if the item sells for $2 or $200, I show you all of them. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace.